center of the college football universe was Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And oh boy, did this game deliver. I mean, first of all, you had Alabama start out the game by going up 28 to nothing, I believe it was. And you're like, okay, this game is over. And Georgia says, um, no, excuse me. We're a top four team here. So they come roaring back, actually take the lead for like 13 seconds. And then Jalen Milrow says, nah, I'm going to throw the game winning touchdown pass. What a freaking game. And back and forth, and yes, to elaborate on your point, I did think the game was over. Um, At halftime, I went and took a little break and watched part two of a certain documentary on Netflix about a certain professional wrestling figure. Um, And then I went back, and I looked at the score, and it was 28-15 Alabama. George was driving, so I said, oh, no, better strap in here. I think George is going to make this a game. Long and behold, they did. Um... I got to say, I thought Alabama, you know, we talked about this last week. You had said you thought it was going to be more of a high-scoring game than I did. I kind of thought both teams would start out the way Georgia started out, which was a little nervous, not right. Alabama just blitzed them to start the game. Two turnovers. Jalen Milrow was essentially perfect in the first half, ran for over 100 rushing yards. I thought that was the best game he has ever played. Under the circumstances, in the whites, you know, he showed something last year in the SEC championship game late in the game, but he still wasn't as good of a passer as what he was on on Saturday night. And I think Alabama, part of it is, I think they somewhat thought they were dominating Georgia so badly. They sort of let their foot off the gas offensively when Georgia really wasn't dead yet. They they were not in attack mode. You saw Jalen Milrow not running around as much. Uh, you saw Georgia really starting to contain the edge defensively. And the Carson Beck with just a few, a few amazing deep balls down the sideline to get Georgia back in that game. Georgia also started using the running game in the second half. And then obviously, like you said, the, the last few plays of the game, Back and forth, one play touchdowns on both sides. A game that looked like Alabama was going to come in and stomp Georgia at halftime turned into what we all thought it was going to be, which is probably the game of the season. I would not be surprised if we see these two teams play each other again at least two more times. So that's interesting because to me, in order for that to happen – Georgia probably has to beat Texas. And I don't and know if they, they can. Pro- and they probably have to beat Tennessee, which Alabama has to play Tennessee on the 19th, and yes. which is the same day Georgia has to play Texas. And, and you and I were just talking about this. We were trying to figure out would college game day be in Knoxville, Tennessee, or would they be in Austin, Texas? Because those are both huge games. But we got a couple weeks before that. But let me ask you this. Did Jalen Milrow jump to the front of the pack for the Heisman Trophy after that performance? Um, I think it's debatable. I think what Travis Hunter has done at Colorado, even though they are such a mess in my opinion, I know they're, they're winning games, I get it, but to me they're mostly a two-player show in, in Sidor and Travis Hunter. I think when you have a two-way player like that who was playing both corner and receiver exceptionally well, unless Travis Hunter gets injured here, I really think it's his Heisman Trophy to lose. I think Jalen Milrow is certainly a candidate. And again, the way he played Saturday night, that was the best game he ever played. To me, he's got a little Lamar Jackson in him. Um, he's got a little Jalen Hurts in him. I, you know, just seeing him in that Alabama jersey looks a little bit like Hurts when he was there, in, in my opinion. Um, so I think Alabama offense, I think Jalen's going to be great. I think he's going to continue to be great. Certainly a Heisman Trophy candidate, but I don't know. Both those two guys in Colorado right now are going to be hard to top. So Jalen Milrow on Saturday was 27 of 33 for 374 yards, two touchdowns. That was his passing game. He had 16 carries for 117 yards, 
two touchdowns and a long of 36 yards. I think that was his his 36 yard touchdown run. The- yeah, but most of that came in the first half. Like I said, he had over 100 yards in the first half. So for whatever reason, Alabama, and again, may, this is a warning experience for Kaywin DeVore, who I was very impressed with. Um, you know, his first time being in that SEC in that environment against that team, who's well coached by Kirby Smart, to come out with Nick Saban there, who we both alluded to could give Alabama potential motivation. Um, you know, to come out and play like that in the first half. Again, I thought Alabama just thought they were dominating Georgia so badly. They didn't need to give it their best shot in the second half, and that's when comebacks happen. So I actually think the way that game went down is the best-case scenario for both teams. Georgia can now say, hey, we face deficits. We can come back from this. And Alabama can say, hey, we learned our lesson. We need to keep our foot on the gas pedal. Um, it The way Alabama played, Reminded me a lot of the way Kalen DeBoer constructed his offense last year with Michael Penix at Washington. You know, like Ryan Williams, the 17-year-old. who is- I, I was blanking on his name. I wanted to bring him up. Thank you for saying it. That kid, I, I am going to say it right now. I don't care what his age is. He could be a legit NFL wide receiver right now. Oh, yeah. 17 years old and he's doing that. He had six receptions for 177 yards, one touchdown and a long of 75 yards. But again, like Jalen Milrow, it reminds me, yes, I see your comparisons to Jalen Hurts, like you mentioned earlier, but I see Michael Penix, the way he's that the Alabama offense is running. Well, Penix didn't move as, as, as much as, as Milrow. Sure. That's a fair argument, but I do, I do see a comparison between, not necessarily in the way they play, but the way the offense is flowing, like what you saw at Washington last year and what you're seeing at Alabama this year. Basically, I think Alabama is pretty much flipped the script. They've they've gone from you know one of the best defensive teams in the country, and they're still very good defensively. They still have a lot of the Nick Saban recruits, though obviously not as much. Some of them went to the transfer portal. But I heard somebody say this week that basically K1 DeVore is the offensive version of Nick Saban. And, you know, they could be right on that. From what I've seen so far, and I told you this last week, I thought Alabama was going to win the game. I thought Alabama was better than Georgia this year. I like Georgia. I still think they're going to be in the CFP even if they lose to Texas, which is, again, our conversation going back to how valuable is the regular season now with the expanded CFP playoff. But I just – Georgia showed some signs offensively. But, again, a lot of their signs in every big game they play, they're coming in the second half – you know, maybe the Kentucky game, now Kentucky beat Ole Miss. So is that a credible more win for Georgia that they were able to survive against Kentucky? I don't know. I don't get a good read off Georgia right now like I do off Alabama. Right. Like, Alabama goes on the road and plays Vanderbilt this week. And then they host South Carolina. So I don't think you're going to learn a lot of, more about Alabama until that October 19th game in Knoxville against Tennessee. Um, As of right now, Alabama's favored by 23 against Vanderbilt. Meanwhile, Georgia, you know they're going to be angry coming home to face Auburn after the way that game in Tuscaloosa went down. So Auburn is about to feel... And Auburn's not as great of a team this year. Um... I would say this, like like me and you talked about, I don't think these two teams are going to meet in the SEC championship game this year unless Tennessee and Texas were to somehow lose in another game. I do think, however, it's plausible, depending on seeding, these two teams could meet again in the college football playoff. And I'll, if I'll we say, were to get these two in the so, national championship, I would be perfectly all right with that because well, – the so, last two national championships they played for against each other have been fantastic football games. I'll add one more element to it. I know a lot of people want to still say that LSU is Alabama's, you know, number one main rival. I don't think that anymore. 
I it's actually Georgia. think Georgia is Alabama's main rival. It's Georgia. Given how frequently they've met in the SEC championship, given that they've played twice in the national championship, it's Georgia. Um, and to go back to your earlier point, Carson Beck had a fantastic game. Well, he had a good game in the second half. He was a disaster in the first half. Oh, that I agree with. Um, So let me ask you this. We we know that Jalen Milrow is most likely going to the NFL draft this come after this season, if I had to guess. Do you think that depending on whoever has the number one pick, that he could be the number one, he could go number one? I don't. I I alluded to it a little earlier. I personally think Travis Hunter should go number one. Depending on who, again, if it's a quarterback needy team, maybe you go Shador Sanders, who, you know, I don't know. I don't think these guys are generational prospects like the quarterbacks we had in this past year's draft. But I, I think it would take even more of sensational play by Milrow to get that number one pick. Because I think the way all the scouts are thinking right now is Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders are going one and two. I don't know about Shador Sanders. I, it depends a lot on what Dion does. If he stays at Colorado, does Shador go to the NFL or does he continue to stay at UC with his father? Yeah, that's a good point. I really think it obviously depends on who's going to get that number one pick later in the year. Yeah. Which it looks like Jacksonville is, but I, 